Hello everybody, I'm Nick and as a Java content creator for the past four years, I never once addressed the hate I'm getting from C Sharp developers down in the comments saying that C Sharp is just better than Java and yada yada yada, but today I'm breaking my silence. To celebrate the release of Java 20, I'm going to talk about three features that Java had before C Sharp had it, which of course makes it better. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple Java console application here using Java 19 with preview features enabled. I'm recording this before Java 20 is out, so I can't use any of those features. And the first feature I want to talk about is the record type. Now, C Sharp has been bragging for the past few years because they got this amazing record type. But what they don't know is that we in Java got a record type ourselves all the way back in March of 2020 as a preview feature of Java 14. Then a year later in Java 16, it turned into an official feature. And of course, everyone knows that we get two Java releases a year, which automatically makes it better than C Sharp, which only gets one. So just a quick refresher, what is a record type in Java? Well, I'm gonna go and say new Java class and I have this record option. I'm gonna say point 2D, so a point in 2D space. And this is what I get. And I wanna have two parameters here. The first is the X and the other one is the Y. And this is how a record looks in Java. Now, it would be amazing if I could just have multiple public records in a single class file. Unfortunately, I can't do that. That's a limitation on Java. Even if I give it a separate name, I have to move this into a separate file. Well, whatever, let's just ignore it. And what does this do? Well, this, exactly what you see here, actually translates and is compiled to something like this, where you have this sort of Pojo object, plain old Java object, to transfer some state and here we transfer the X and the Y. And the great thing about this is that first, these parameters are immutable, you cannot change them. And also you have an equality check on the values themselves, not just the reference. So if I revert that all the way back to the record and I go to the application and have point A over here using a new point to D and I'm gonna pass these two parameters and then I have another point, point B, and that also happens to have the same parameters, then if I say system.out.println and I say point A equals point B, then as you're gonna see in the console, we're gonna get true. Even though those are separate references, records overload the quality check to make sure that you only check the values themselves, not the references. Now here's where it gets interesting, and if you're coming from C Sharp, you might be surprised, but if you have a double equals, this in Java is effectively a reference check, so this will be false. <laughs> now a few interesting things here. You cannot remove these curly braces, you have to have them there even though they're empty. Okay, anyway, so let's see how that will look in C Sharp. So C Sharp also got records, they got them later in September of 2020, and you'd have the same point to D. The difference here is that C Sharp has properties, which is similar to how Kotlin has properties, and that's what's really backing C Sharp records, meaning you don't have private fields that expose a method, you just have the property itself. So if I want to have the same thing and I want to have a point A and a point B with the same values, I can simply do this and then say point A equals point B, uh, and if I run this, I'm going to get true because equality checks between the equals operator and the dot equals method, which we also have here, are actually matching in records because the operator can be overloaded. In Java, you cannot overload the operator. Another thing I want to point out is that you don't have to have these hanging uh, angle brackets here, which is okay, it's a good decision. And also, if you have a type that is just hanging and it doesn't really have any properties, you can simply do this, and this is valid C Sharp. Moving on to the next feature that Java got first, C Sharp 11 introduced raw string literals. However, we got text blocks all the way back in 2019. So in September of 2019 with Java 13, Java got the ability to have a text block like this. Now, what's great about this, and this can also be like this, is that there is nothing taken into account before the text starts here. So if I go and I simply just print it to the console, then as you can see, this is all you get. Hello from Nick, nothing beforehand. This is especially great because if you're dealing with things like JSON, for example, and you don't have to worry about putting it all the way to the back so you don't have trailing uh, white spaces, you can just do this. And we start from the beginning like this. Now, let's say we want to have a parameter in here. Well, it's very simple and very intuitive. Let's say I have the name as a parameter. So Nick is over here. Java does not support string interpolation. So it would be either concatenation or formatting. So I can use the percentage symbol and then S and then say dot formatted in the end and pass down the name. 
and in this amazing design that is absolutely fine, I can have the property replaced in here. Excellent. Now, another thing I want to mention is that what happens if you have three consecutive double quotes while you're starting with three double quotes to initiate a text block? Well, let's see if I have one, two, three. Oh, I break the flow. Well, the logical thing to do, you might think, is that, hey, let me just allow the user to add an extra one. So N plus one on the opening and closing double quotes will allow for the N amount of double quotes to be just acceptable. No, what you do instead is you just escape it. And that is it, because in text blocks, you don't have raw parameters. So if I have this, this would be a new line. I can go ahead here, I can run it, and as you can see, I have a new line. Let's see how this feature is implemented in C Sharp real quick. So I'll go back here, same thing. So text equals, oh, three quotes, clearly a rip off, but okay, I'm gonna paste this. And again, you can move everything and this is going to remove any of the trailing white spaces. So if I run this, as you can see, same experience as before. Now there's a few differences. For example, first, if I have a name as a parameter, you don't have this awesome formatted method. And if you wanna replace the parameter here in C Sharp, all you wanna do is use the uh, dollar sign, which initiates string interpolation. Now here's where it gets interesting. Because we already have curly braces over here, we have to actually escape them. And that's because they're also used for string interpolation. So all I need to say is n plus one dollar signs to override the amount of angle brackets I want as literals. So I'm just gonna say two of them here, and then one, two, one, two, to initialize my parameter. And now all I have to do is just run this and I get the same thing. And if I had just something that doesn't have, for example, the angle bracket here, then I can simply say hello from and pass down the parameter like this, no problem with just one. Now, another point is that anything in here is actually a raw parameter. So there is no escaping, there is no nothing. If it is in here, it will be printed exactly as it is. So it's not gonna have a new line here. And also what happens if I wanna have three sequential double quotes here? Well. You just have n plus one on the opening and closing, and then anything in here is a raw parameter. So you don't have to deal with escaping, you don't have to deal with anything. And if I keep increasing that, I can keep increasing opening and closing. But anyway, Java got it first, so it doesn't really matter. The last feature that Java got first is called switch expressions. Now, switch expressions were introduced in Java all the way back in Java 12 in March of 2019, and there was a preview feature, and C Sharp had to wait all the way until September to eventually get with C Sharp 8. Now, what are switch expressions? Well, let me show you. I have the following enum over here called payment status, and I can get a random payment status value of this enum. So if I go in my main, I can just say, hey, give me a random status, and then I can switch on it. And the way we traditionally switch is you have a case. In this case, my case is paid. And I would have something like this, where I have a block and then I break. And if I want to print in the console, I'd just say, hey, status was paid. And if I have all of my other uh, options, so unpaid would be unpaid and then disputed. And that is fine, but what I can do now in Java is I can use an enhanced switch element or a switch expression, and I can convert it to this, which is pretty sweet. If we go into C Sharp land, I can have the same enum. Now, C Sharp is not cool enough to have enums that operate like classes, but you know, what can they do? Eventually, they're gonna copy that as well. And that's how this would look in C Sharp. So if I go ahead and I run it, I get the same thing. If I go and I run this in Java, I get the same thing. Now in C Sharp, you cannot just turn this into something like this. This is just not valid syntax. If you wanna have a switch expression, you have to approach it in a different way where you return something. So you have the text and then you switch on the status. So switch here and then a parenthesis, and then you can have your cases. So if you wanna have your paid, then you can have it here, but you actually have to return it. So paid and then disputed. So everything will return something and then console.writeline text and we're going to be fine. Now the compiler actually warns me that I can also have a default arm here, but it's gonna be NA because the randomizer cannot generate something out of the bounds, but whatever, let's just shut up the compiler. So same experience, as in Java, very, very similar, but you cannot have the processing that we have in Java. Now, the interesting thing about C Sharp is that you can actually switch on anything. So consider that I have a record type in C Sharp called payment, and I have an ID, a payment status, and then the date that this payment occurred. I can add my payment up here and I can switch on the payment. And then if I wanna check something about the payment, all I need to do is say status is paid. 
Now, an interesting thing about this, which arguably is pretty cool, is that you don't actually have to just have these equality checks. You can also have more than something. So if the ID is more than 10, for example, do something or less than one and five. Okay, this is, doesn't make any sense, but you have this very nice matching over here. Now, the great thing about Java is that, and again, I don't know if this will be actually released in Java 20 because I do record this before the release, but we can actually do something very similar in Java. First, let's implement a record type the same way we did in C Sharp, then add our payment and switch on the payment status to just get the text. So then all you need to say is system.out dot print line and then print the text and that is it same experience as before with the parameter now here's where it gets interesting with switch expressions let's say i want to switch on the payment itself well now they have preview features enabled i can actually do the following i can say case payment and i can get the payment with an alias so if the type is of type payment then give me parameter p and i can say when p dot payment status equals unpaid in this scenario so i can have the same approach in pattern matching as in C Sharp. Now you don't actually see it here, but if I go and I build, I do have an error saying you're not matching all possible input values. So the compiler will warn me and not allow me to compile unless I handle everything. But as a Java developer, I don't need help. Now the pattern matching on switches has been in preview for quite a long time. This is actually the third preview, but everyone knows that the third of anything is the best. Look at Shrek the third, of course. So there is nothing to worry about. I'm pretty sure that this version will go into Java sometime. And there you have it. Three features that Java got first and C Sharp eventually copied and added into its own language. What do you think about this? And how do you feel as a Java developer or as a C Sharp developer if you're watching this? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me, as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. Have a wonderful April and keep coding.